Any further ado, I have the great honor of introducing myself. <laughs> I will be giving the first of seven talks with me for reading, but I, uh, I'm unable to keep the 10,000 words, the top 1,000 words in the English language at my fingertips. Okay. Ready? <laughs> All right. Today, I am here to tell you that dogs go places they are not from and eat weird animals in their homes, and to suggest that this may be the reason for fewer weird animals. <laughs> dogs are the first animals that humans ever took from the world and made their friends. <laughs> humans and dogs became friends as long ago as 300 hundred years before present. <laughs> When the old-time humans started to go to different parts of the world, they brought their dog friends with them. This is something that humans still do. They go to places and they bring their animal friends. Twenty hundred years ago, humans found a new place to go where they and their dog friends had not been before. This place was a piece of land surrounded by big water. This place had been surrounded by big water for a long time. It had not touched other big pieces of land for many, many years. Lots of hundreds of years. Because of this, the animals in this place are very different from the animals in other places. We call them weird animals. <laughs> there are more than 100 types of weird animals left today. Weird animals are more family to humans than they are to many other types of animals, but they are still weird. They do and say things that are different from other animals, and they look very different from other animals, too. Also, even though the world is very big, with lots of space in it for animals, weird animals are only found on this one piece of land. Because of this, lots of people think it is important to help weird animals, or at least they would be sad if all of the weird animals disappear. <laughs> even though people would be very sad if weird animals disappear, weird animals are quickly disappearing for a lot of different reasons. One is because their homes are being changed by humans. Humans change weird animal homes by putting human food all over the place. Weird animals do not really like to live in homes made of human food. Weird animals like tree homes. More human food land means less trees. Less trees means less weird animal homes. Weird animals do not just live in tree homes, they make new tree homes over time by helping tree babies grow. <laughs> Weird animals help tree babies grow by putting tree babies into the land with their behinds. <laughs> this gives the land a memory, a memory of the old trees. Without weird animals, the memory of the land changes. Humans also actually sometimes eat weird animals, because if you put a weird animal on a fire, it becomes food. If you are a person with no other food, a weird animal can be very good to eat. So we know weird animals are disappearing because of less trees, more human food, and humans eating weird animals as food. But what about dogs? Because when humans came to the new piece of land 20 hundred years ago, their dog's friends came with them. And now the dogs are in every part of the piece of land surrounded by water, even staying by the trees where weird animals live. Me and my friends started to think about this a lot when we started to notice that dogs and weird animals were often in the same place. And so we started to study where dogs are, where they go, and how they can change life for weird animals. This was the start of something called Mad Dog. Mad Dog is a group of humans that are interested in how dogs can change weird animal life, and we started the plan to understand some years ago. We do this by taking pictures of dogs near trees and using these pictures to guess how many dogs there are near trees using numbers. <laughs> we also walk in lines through the trees and write down when we see weird animals in their homes using numbers. Then we see if one set of numbers changes the other set of numbers. We think that if dogs are bad for weird animals, more dog numbers will mean less weird animal numbers. We also ask humans about, their about what their dog friends do, such as, does your dog friend go to the land with trees? And have you seen your dog friend eat animals, such as weird animals? <laughs> we also take blood from dogs and from weird animals to see if the blood has things in it that can make weird animals sick and even dead. <laughs> this is what we learned. 
As you can see in this computer picture, where there are dogs, <laughs> where there are dogs, there are not weird animals. This is especially true in lands with lots of trees. Also, humans said that lots of their dog friends kill animals, lots of dogs go away from home alone, and lots of humans with their dogs go to the land with trees where weird animals live. We also learned that small flying animals have a lot of dog and weird animal blood in them, so that small flying animals can bite both and make their blood come together. <laughs> and sometimes the blood does have things that can make weird animals sick and even dead. This is sad. <laughs> In less than one week, me and my mad dog friends will go back to the piece of land with water surrounding it, and we will get more dog blood and more pictures of dogs. We hope that if we go back every year and take lots of pictures and blood, that in time we will be able to tell how many weird animals will disappear because dogs eat them, and how many weird animals will disappear because they are sick with dog blood. We are also trying to see whether it is possible to have fewer dogs by not letting dogs have babies, and to have less sick dog blood around by helping dogs at a free dog hospital. Thank you for listening, and if there are any questions, then let us hold them until the last human finishes talking while showing pictures. <laughs>